data has returned. Recruit a team of former teenagers for interviews. What time is it? I believe it's morphin' time. Oh, you know what? It's morphin' time. It's morphin' time. It's morphin' time. It's morphin' time. Walter, it feels only fitting that uh, you're the first Power Ranger that I'm interviewing for our interview series for the 30th anniversary, as you were one of the first that I met way back at the first Power Morphicon. We've yeah. talked at during the 20th anniversary of the series, and now we're at the 30th. So thank you for making time, and, and we're really excited to to learn more about you know your experience for Once and Always. Yeah, no, happy to, uh, happy to be here, man. I'm glad I got some time to do this. This is awesome. So did you ever think that you were going to suit up again and maybe fight putty patrollers in your future? You know, I I think I had always anticipated that it would happen at some point. I mean, Zach is such an iconic character and uh, to have created him from the ground up with Power Rangers and for it to uh, succeed and having its overwhelming success, I always felt like I needed to come back at some point. I just didn't think it would be 28 years later. <laughs> did it feel seamless stepping back in or was it a, a bigger challenge for you than you expected it was you know it was fairly seamless I mean I, I, I'm happy that um, I'm happy that it was done in the way that it was done meaning um, that it's it's us 30 years later so um, that that seems to work fine because it is 30 years later and we have all grown and um, our responsibilities are different and so forth and so on um, especially uh, with David, working with David Yost, um, Billy. Uh, Billy and Zach are Walter and David. So, you know, it's, it's kind of cool because we have a relationship, David and I, and it's not far from the relationship that uh, David, that not far from the relationship that Billy and Zach have. That felt comfortable. It was odd to to be back on the command center and, and in the juice bar after 28 years. It was very surreal. It was like, I've been here before and was a big part of my life and it's different, but the same, you know, it was, it was very odd. And yeah. you got the rad bug as well. We got to see a little glimpse of that in the trailer. Yeah. Rad bug 2.0. Yeah. Rad bug 2.0. I was like, okay, it's a little different, but we still got the same vibe. Let's go. Let's say, hey, we get in the rad bug. Let's go. Hey. So, well, let's, let's talk about that for a second. You know, we, we saw glimpses of the juice bar set, uh, we we know that the the command center got an upgrade. Uh, digital consoles, no more analog. Uh, Alpha is back as well. Um, what what was going through your head when you stepped onto those sets in particular, since they played such a impactful you know part of your your time on the show? Well, each time I, I mean, I think the first thing you you look at is what's different, and, and there's definitely some differences. Things have been enhanced and and um, have uh, have grown, and so. Um, that was kind of fun exploratorily. I was like, you know, to explore. I was like, okay, we'll see what, what's what's command center console looking like now. And then, all right, juice bar. Okay, I see what we got on the menu now. Okay, Ernie's still got the recipe over here. You know, so yeah, that was it. Was fun. It was it was really interesting. I mean, you know, we are living in a world of make believe. However, it is really truly part of the world I've already lived in. That makes a lot of sense. Um, you talked about your, your interactions with David, but this was the first time that you actually were acting with, with Steve and, and uh, Catherine as well. How did dynamics play out? I mean, obviously you guys are friends and, and connected with all of the different conventions you do, but being on screen, I'm sure felt a little bit different with these two in particular. Um, no, I mean, you know, I, I, it's funny because I know them all. I, I've, I've grown to know them over the years. We do comic cons together. Uh, I have relationships with them as people. Um, but it was really interesting to see them on set as their Power Rangers characters, you know, as, as Kat and Rocky and, and Aisha and, and Adam, you know, and um, that was very, very, it was very cool. Um, Steve Cardenas, who, you know, we're friends. He's uh, been a jujitsu instructor to me. Um, and we have a, a cool relationship. I didn't know him as Rocky. So, 
and I didn't really watch the show after I left the show. So I didn't identify with their characters from knowing what they did afterwards. So like some of Steve's choices on set, so I would look at him like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> and then when I saw it all to put together, I go, oh, I get who Rocky is now. I, I get it. He's kind of a goofball, but, you know, funny. And and the guy, he's he's ready. You know, he's he's good. He's a cool dude. Um, but I didn't know who he was on the set. So I was like, huh, interesting. <laughs> you know. Did you find yourself going back to watch any of your old episodes before you started filming this uh, special? I think I looked at some of the hip hop keto footage um, to see what what did I do then? What was what was the thing? How how was I growing? And and what direction was I going? And um, how can I apply that? Because uh, in essence, I mean, it's been twenty eight years since I've really seriously done hip hop keto. So um, you know, to pull some of that out was was definitely interesting. From a legacy perspective, we know that uh, Trini plays a very important role with the introduction of her daughter, uh, played by Charlie. Can you talk about the importance of legacy to you and just sort of to the to the story and the franchise as a whole, you know, just what stands out to you with that regard? Well, um, one, Tree Trang is, is truly and dearly missed in this moment and, and has been for quite some time. And I'm very, very happy that we are able to pay her her proper respects uh, at this time in our 30th year. Um, you know, I guess you guys were kids when she passed on. So it was kind of heavy to, to have a conversation about it then maybe. But now you're all adults and, and there's other kids and you're not as attached as you had been at that point. Um, I'm just really happy that we're able to, to you know, give her 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 flowers now, and um, to pay tribute to her. And Charlie Kirsch her, playing Min is an amazing actor, amazing action star. She is the perfect girl to come in and and play her daughter. And um, and we had a great connection, so I was happy about that. So the other big thing that just came out recently was that. Boom Studios Kickstarters crossed half a million dollars in fan raise funds for their books. So it doesn't seem like there's any shortage of interest in the franchise or, or you know, shortage of storytelling opportunities. Um, you know, I know you've been, you know, in, invested with Zach's uh, continuing story uh, with Boom, but uh, yeah. are, are you current with the the Omega Rangers uh, story or? I am, I'm somewhat comics? behind, but I, I know I'm, I'm fairly aware, but I don't know where I'm at currently. Like, I, I'm not sure how far it's advanced beyond my knowledge of it so far. So from what you have read, how do you feel about Zach, Trini, and Jason getting to have this additional story arc beyond the uh, uh, the peace conference? I'm quite happy about it. I mean, I think it's, uh, it's, it's a better way to be perceived um, that we left to go do something greater than just go to a peace conference with no story attached to it. So um, I'm very happy about it. I, I, I'm loving it. I love the Omega Rangers. I love the costumes. I love what we're doing. You know, the fact that we're this intergalactic, you know, Rangers um, that are helping other Rangers in different places. I love that. So I think that's amazing. Well, we're very excited to see where that uh, comic direction goes as well. Um, I guess back to the, the special, you know, from a production standpoint, things have changed pretty dramatically in 28 years since you were last involved. Obviously, a number of uh, different studios have held the IP. Um, what was the production process like for you compared to when you were originally filming? Well, it was a lot calmer. It was, uh, I mean, we had a lot more time to really sit down and 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 go through the script and, you know, detail points. Um, that we thought were important to go over our fights, to work on our, our choreography, um, and um, to just like in general get the get the scenes on 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 the feet. So um, you know, whereas when we did Power Rangers in the original in the beginning, it was it was very rushed. We were doing two episodes a week. Um, we were mixing up stories. So it was like everything was kind of thrown together. This was put together really nicely. So uh, it felt much more professional. 
What do you think the biggest challenge was as far as stepping back into this role? Was it you know the the headspace? Was it more of the physicality of it, or something else? The biggest challenge I would probably say was the physicality, just simply because you know we are getting older. We are no longer you know sixteen uh, year olds. Um, we're much older. Um, I, for one, am the oldest actor on the show. So, um, but I'm I'm also very active. So I was able to do everything I needed to do. I was able to pull everything, you know, out and you know, and do all my stunts and so forth. But you know, it, it hurt a little more. <laughs> you well, know? I, I have to ask. You know, in the world of revivals, obviously, we're very excited that we get this particular story. But there was one other property that you were involved in that you know I was curious to know. Do you think we might actually get a space cases revival with everything happening, you know, in our uh, in our world today? That would be uh, an amazing thing. Um, I'm not sure. I I I don't know. I think we'd have to ask Bill Moomy about it. Bill Moomy, <laughs> what are we gonna do? Come on, Susan D's Bill Moomy, Peter David. Let's let's go. Speaking of Peter David, I know he's uh he's been ill just recently, so I'm sending out good uh good energy and wishes for him for uh, a quick recovery. But yes, that would be amazing. Uh, uh space cases revival or reunion or something. Um, that was a fun cast. It was a great show. So from a Power Ranger standpoint. Are there any episodes that you think that we should go back and watch before we watch the special? Anything in particular that you think might be helpful for people who just need a refresher or maybe oh, yeah. just you know exact you moments? Should, you, should, you should definitely go back and watch all of them. All of them? <laughs> yeah, all of them. Start from the beginning. We've got time. To the end. Homework begins right now. So you do so many conventions and you get to meet so many fans. I'm curious to know, are there any particular stories that you've heard from fans that have just stuck with you as you've continued this trek to pretty much, I mean, it seems like you're traveling the world to go meet fans on a regular basis, but has anything in particular stuck with you this time? I did a Comic-Con in LA um, just recently that blew me away. Uh, I met an 11 year old boy, I can't tell you what his name was, but he was 11 and he walked up to my table and he spoke to me as if he was a 35 year old man. And he was telling me, he was, he was coming to me and he was saying, I just want to say thank you for being um, a positive motivation in my life. And I was like, didn't expect those words to come out of an 11 year old. I was like, bro, how old are you? He's like, I'm 11 years old. And um, he went on to tell me a story. He'd been suffering through quite a bit and, um, he was saying how Power Rangers and, and in fact, my character had been uh, a motivating factor for him to help get pushing forward and, um, and you know, just giving him some kind of a relief through the things he was going through. I was astounded because I've heard stories from people um, that were grown, that were 35, who were going back to their child and going, when I was, you know, a kid, I was in foster home or I was going through this or my parents were breaking up and, or I was, you know, physically ill and, and you helped me get through, you helped me push forward. And I want to thank you, you know, but to hear from an 11 year old boy that was going through it right at that particular moment and was saying to me in real time, I'm dealing with this right now. And I just want to say thank you because you are helping me get through it was Man, it was it was pretty powerful. It's like it just goes to show that the show continues to live on. Here we are, thirty years later, and I still got eleven year old boys uh, being motivated to be positive and to want to be the best people that they can be. I love it. it. It's really amazing how much of an impact that you know. I, I can definitely say I remember the first episode. You know when it aired. I remember you know all of the, the highlights where I was when I watched Doomsday. You know, just the the event aspect of it, but also just the powerful message behind it has always carried on with me. And and I appreciate that the Ranger family, you know, has continued to to focus on the message as they meet new people as well. Yeah, yeah. It's uh I think it's one of the things that the Power Rangers has really done well, um, is be encouraging to be the best possible person that you can be. I mean, like, you know, the the great thing about it is, you know we're titled as teenagers with attitude, but it's not attitude because we're delinquent. It's attitudes because 
we are confident in who we are. We're confident in wanting to be the best brand of ourselves that we can be. And as a team, we're unbeatable. That's our confidence. 